Howdy there, Murdoch here, and we're back in this video with the nine reasons why Golf Story for the Nintendo Switch could have, should have, may have, won, or been nominated for Game of the Year. Before we totally get going on this video, I do want to acknowledge a couple things. I understand that in a year where you get major releases like a new Mario and Zelda, or an unstoppable beast like PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, that games like this kind of get ignored or somewhat swallowed up. But at the same time, that's really a shame, so I wanted to put a bit of a spotlight on a game that's not really going to get a whole lot of attention outside of hardcore gamers and, you know, kind of people in the know. And so I wanted to go over my nine reasons why I think that's the case. Nine, of course, because, you know, in this game you play a round of nine holes, because uh, you're, you're playing golf. Yeah. Beyond that, I think it's time to just jump right into this thing. I'm going to start with value. I find this game to be an incredibly good value at just 15 bucks. Not that I put a lot of stock into this kind of argument, but a lot of people believe that for every dollar you put into a game, you should get about an, an hour worth of gameplay. Well, I did a complete playthrough on this game, and that's including not replaying courses very many times, or even at all if I didn't have to, and I got 20 hours out of it. That's better than the ratio of $1 per hour, so in terms of that, I think it's a really good value. Satisfying mechanics. The mechanics of the game are pretty simple. They pretty much operate on a standard golf game system where you have a power bar or meter and you essentially charge the power and accuracy of the shot and then there you go. That's pretty much all you're doing in terms of the golf. However, there are other things throughout the course of the game that help to break up those mechanics just a little bit. You have disc golf, you fly drones, you have other things to kind of vary what you're doing mechanically in the game. But even though they're simple, they're always very fun and they do feel rewarding. Imaginative challenges. Beyond just playing through various rounds of golf, defeating opponents, there are a lot of things to do along the way that really mix up the gameplay of this game and challenge you in different ways using different sets of skills. There's disc golf, times where you fly drones, foot races, lots of crazy puzzles. There are tons of things in this game that challenge you along the way beyond just playing through the various courses. Which leads me to my next point of unique courses. There are eight different courses throughout the course of this game and each of them play fairly differently with different sets of challenges or hazards along the way. Some courses have unique wildlife that if the ball enters their given area, they'll do various things to your ball. There are, in some cases, terrain on some courses that are unique just to its environment. But this game is pretty wacky and embraces the fact that different places are going to have entirely different environments. And they're going to play differently. And that's a lot of fun. A love letter to Retro. This game was clearly made with a certain love of classic RPGs like The Legend of Zelda and Final Fantasy, and I feel that it's a point in its favor that a modern game can retain its modern nature and sense of humor and style, but give a big nod to games of the past, classic games that helped define the genre and the industry. So I think that's a point in its favor as well. It's indie. Now granted, Obviously, a game shouldn't be nominated just based on the fact that it's an indie game, but this is an indie game with a lot of style, and over the last several years, there's been a bigger presence of indie gaming in the industry. You have amazing games like Inside and Cuphead and things like that, and this game is no exception. I think it's important to give indie titles a nice spotlight because these are often done more out of love than out of money, and they're done out of the artistry of gaming, and I think it's important to push the artistry of gaming forward, so that's another point for me. It's an indie game that deserves some attention. It's even got a multiplayer mode. Now granted, that's not exactly a huge deal, but the fact that this is the type of game that I wouldn't really expect to have it and they threw it in there, it's pretty cool. It's really fun to be able to go head-to-head -head against a friend, and that's all it is. It's a simple head-to-head -head mode. You can't even pick the character model you're using, but it's a cool way to add a little bit of extra value to this game. The fact that it gives you both a campaign and a multiplayer, I think is a big bonus. The 
game is thoughtfully designed, and I'm going to throw general quality in there too. The way you move throughout the courses and the map, the challenges continue to escalate, and they vary everything that you're doing up so you're not like just playing golf the entire time. It was very rare for me to feel lost or confused, or like I didn't really know where I was going or what I should be doing. The way you move from course to course, around each course, and across the world map is very thoughtful. You move from point A to B, everything is relatively seamless, and they send you on paths that seem logical and make sense. And although they don't just tell you exactly what to be doing, you're able to figure out in a way that feels reasonable, but also rewarding. And I think that's definitely a mark of general quality and thoughtful design in gameplay. The game has a really fun story and some cool quests to go along with it. I'm not going to go super into it at this point, however, I found myself chuckling several times throughout the course of the game because the story is really silly. You play as a guy who's trying to break into golf, into the pros, and you have a lot of crazy kooky quests along the way that are really fun and quite unique and something I didn't expect to find in a golf game. Now granted, it's only presented as a golf game. Truly, it's an RPG, not a sports game, even though it does have some classic sports games, mechanics, and concepts. Concepts. However, there are times in this game where you're playing through murder mysteries, moments that are like Pac-Man, stealth moments, like lots of crazy fun things. And the journey is legitimately a lot of fun in the end. So the story and the quests are really good. I really enjoyed it. I was entertained the entire time playing through this game. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you'd like to see more fun, silly stuff, game-related content, Western reviews, sketches, unboxings, Halo-related content, lots of cool stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As I always say, it makes me feel like I accomplished something. But otherwise, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.